Today we begin our discussion on retail pricing, another one of the six P's of retail strategy. The importance of pricing decisions made by retailers is growing because today's consumers have more alternatives to choose from and consumers are much better informed. So consumers, not only do they have different retailers to shop at, there are different brands of products they can buy from and they can easily at the touch of a button search for the best price uh, to help guide their decision on where to make their purchase. So consumers are in a position to seek good value. And value is the ratio of what consumers receive relative to what they pay for it. So it's their perceived benefits over the price of the product. And so, um, you know, when we're looking at value, consumers are trying to find the highest value. So they're not necessarily seeking the lowest price, some of them are, but not all shoppers. Instead of seeking the lowest price, consumers are seeking value. So consumers um, are able to set prices a little bit higher if they provide more benefits. Um, and so retailers might set prices low um, and their sales might increase, but their profit margins are going to decrease. So retailers need to find the value that they can provide to consumers to still meet the profit margin that they want to receive. So there are essentially two pricing strategies that a retailer has to choose from. Um, now, most retailers use somewhat of a combination of these two strategies, but they all lean heavily towards one or the other. And the first pricing strategy you need to be familiar with is high-low pricing. So in high-low pricing, retailers are going to discount initial prices for merchandise through sales promotions. And generally, these sale prices will last about a week, and then the price goes back up. So with, re with high-low pricing, uh, retailers have what we call a discount schedule, and they continually are putting products on sale throughout the year. So prices vary depending on the week that you shop. And there's a few advantages to using the high-low pricing strategy. The first is that it can increase your profit and keep your margins pretty high. Um, because customers who are not price sensitive are willing to pay the high price. Uh, so they're not necessarily shopping for the low price, so they're willing to buy it when it's high. Um, high low pricing also creates some excitement. So this is good for those hedonic shoppers who are looking for excitement. Um, sale prices or the low pricing uh, is gonna draw in customers um, who are looking for those uh, low prices. Remember, they're seeking that adventure. They're looking for excitement. They want to find a bargain. Um, so they're coming in to look for some of those low prices and might buy some items at high price as well. The third advantage is that high low pricing helps retailers sell their slow moving merchandise. So if you have some merchandise that is not selling well, um, and we talked about some reasons why merchandise might not sell well when we talked about our product section, um, we can put it on a low pricing schedule to try to move merchandise with the discounted price. Um, there are a couple of limitations to high-low pricing. The first being that it does train customers to wait. So if you have a retailer who puts their jeans on sale um, one week every month, uh, your cu customers might get to know that. And so they know that jeans are eventually going to go on sale. So I'll wait to buy them until they're at the low price, um, which could have an adverse effect on your profit. Um, however, uh, most retailers who use that high low pricing are hoping that their customers who aren't price sensitive will make up for any of those customers who wait for the low pricing. So that's the first strategy. The second strategy is everyday low pricing. Now, everyday low pricing emphasizes the continuity of retail prices at a level that is somewhere between the non-sale price and a deep discount price. So everyday low pricing doesn't necessarily mean the lowest price. Um, what everyday low pricing means is that the price is going to be the same every day. All right, so if you walk into a Target, Target is a full-line discount store who uses high-low pricing, and you buy a bottle of Suave Shampoo, you go in one week, and the high price might be $3.99. If you go the next week, the price might be on sale at the low pricing for 
$199. So $399 on the high pricing week, $199 on the low pricing week. And that's at Target. You might go into Walmart and the price of that same bottle of Suave Shampoo is $2.99 every day, every week of the year. So everyday low pricing doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the lowest price, but it guarantees that you'll always pay a low price. Um, to reinforce the everyday low pricing strategy, some retailers offer a low price guarantee, which means they will price match if the item can be found at a deep discount somewhere else. Uh, but generally, they're, what they're trying to do here is assure customers of low prices so that customers don't have to read ads or clip coupons or track what stores have the lowest price. Um, and an advantage, a big advantage of everyday low pricing strategy is that it does reduce your advertising and operating expenses. Um, so a retailer who uses everyday low pricing does not have to incur the label cost, the labor cost of changing price tags and hanging signs every week. Um, you also don't have to advertise what the sale price is going to be. So it saves a lot of advertising and operating expenses. It also reduces stockouts and improves your inventory management. Because you're not constantly changing the price high to low, um, your demand isn't going to fluctuate as often. So demand is going to remain steady for those EDLP products, um, which means that you can forecast a little better. And so you're less likely to run out of the product. So those are the two strategies. And like I said, most retailers use a combination of both in their stores, uh, but they do lean more towards one or the other. Um, and there's a really uh, interesting read on page 389 in your textbook, um, and it, it talks about uh, how retailers make this decision and how it's often based on customer preference. And so something to consider is why do you think customers prefer everyday low pricing in one situation, but they like coupons and promotions in other situations? Um, so are there merchandise categories where consumers might prefer one pricing strategy, or is there a retailer type where customers might uh, prefer one pricing strategy over the other? So if you have any thoughts on that, please post them in the chapter 14 discussion board, um, and we'll get some conversation going.